bipolar disorder. Oh, no. Can you explain to me what it is, how it works, what do you experience, how, like, does it change your mind, and what, like, what is bipolar uh, disorder? Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. Mm. So basically, you get sort of extreme highs and extreme lows. Mm -hmm. So, like, imagine a pendulum swinging that way and that mm -hmm. way. You know, we've all got bipolar in us, I believe, to a certain extent. You know, we all get ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But mine are to the extreme. And basically, what happens is, let's put it this way. When I was a kid, when I was about 16 or 17, I used to go out to raves. Mm -hmm. And we used to take these party drugs called ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So imagine the feeling of an ecstasy tablet times a million. That's how I feel. Mm. So I basically, you get like this euphoric high mm -hmm. and you feel amazing. It's, it's beautiful. You know, you, you get this lovely warm feeling, but the only downside of that is you don't sleep because my mind races so much mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you get all these, I get like a really creative. So nearly all people with bipolar disorder are highly creative people. Mm -hmm. um, and um yeah, you've got people like Stephen Fry, Carrie Fisher, um, who else? Yeah, Virginia Woolf, she was bipolar, the author. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get all these like, crazy ideas. I want to write a book, I want to do this, I want to do that. And, and I'm doing like 100 things at once, you know what I mean? Um, but as I said, unfortunately, I don't sleep. Sometimes I don't sleep for up to a week. And the downside of not sleeping for a week is you get something called psychosis. And that, is when it turns dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you know, I hear voices, I hear, I get audio hallucinations, or I think I'm hearing voices. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like, to this day, I don't know if it's real or not, but I get these, I get this almost, like I'm telepathic, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you tell that to the doctors, they're like, yeah, you're having a manic episode, but they've not experienced. I believe if it's happened in my mind, mm -hmm. then it's happened. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, to you know, agree. So yeah. it's almost like having like an episode. It's like it's almost like I liken it to. It's like I have a spiritual experience with every single episode, mm -hmm. you know. But unfortunately, I go so high that I have to be scraped off the ceiling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And then obviously, what goes up has yeah. got to come down. Yeah, and then it, it, it becomes so like a huge depression or like... Well, well, yeah, like, how, like, like, you're what, probably what, not even depressed, but it's because you've been so high, it feels like you're depressed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, obviously your, your productivity suffers straight away, like when you have a, a, an episode, right? My productivity? Yeah. You, like you can't, like, can, can, can you still kind of, can you still keep functioning? Yeah, for a while, until you burn out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, so basically, I have to take these uh, mood stabilizers. Mm -hmm. So they basically just keep me in the middle, mm -hmm. which is the best place for me, really. Mm. You know, I love the highs. Don't get me wrong; mm -hmm. they're great. Yeah. But you know, there's always consequences. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And and you're like, well, what what should people do if, for example, someone knows anyone like, and they know, like, you know what, they have an episode. What is the best thing to do? Well, I think first of all, they're their family members. If they know them well, they'll probably know that they're having an episode. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But maybe speak to one of their family members. Yeah. Um, if you're a really good friend of them, it's, it's probably with me. It's no point. The worst thing that could have happened to me is someone saying, you're having an episode mm -hmm. and I start getting resentful. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm enjoying my moment. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. so let them enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, but... Um, if you're really concerned, you could phone a crisis help helpline. Maybe if they're on, if they're in a mental health system. Maybe or they're, they're you know, they flag up on the records. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know, mm -hmm. but I, you know, but just probably just let it play out. Do you know what I mean? Because um, if it's that bad, you know, the person might end up getting hospitalised, or mm -hmm. we might get like. Um, I mean, I've, I've had treatment. I've had a home treatment tr team around my flat before where they've treated me uh, at my own home. Mm -hmm. You know. So they have to give you like uh, maybe antipsychotic medication to bring you off the episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. How how good are like the, the like how good is the treatment? Like how uh, sure you are that like those kind of pills that keep you in the middle they will work if you consistently will keep drinking them. 
Absolutely, no, no, definitely, yeah. definitely work. I mean, it's just a matter of finding the right medication. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like trial and error. Some medications, you know, you might not get on with. You have to find the right medication. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know I'm taking them tablets. I take them every day. Yeah. But, you know, I've been, unfortunately, I've made a rod for my own back with my illness because I, I would, I would enjoy those highs so much. I wouldn't take my medication mm -hmm. and then I'd end up being hospitalized. You yeah, know what I mean, and you know, and, and really, I didn't have to go all through that. If I would have just took my meds, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to go in the hospital. Yeah, you know. But what it is, you know, a, a bad habit of mine was, you know, thinking I'm well. Mm -hmm. So you think you're well, and then you just, which you, which you're, you know, like now I'm well. Mm -hmm. So I could quite easily go, oh, I'm not taking my pills anymore. I don't need them. Yeah. You know, and, and then they'll come out of my system, and then it's like playing a bit of Russian roulette, really. Mm. Are there any kind of downsides to taking those pills? Like, is there like any kind of side um, effects? I don't know. Maybe long term there might be. It might mm. might cause some organ damage. I don't, I don't know. Mm. But the, the ones I'm taking at the moment, they also epileptics take them as well mm -hmm. for epilepsy. Um, but there was a previous medication I was on called lithium. Mm -hmm. and it was really damaging, very toxic substance and I used to have to have blood tests because it can affect the kidneys, I think, or the liver, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You but it. yeah, it's just part of, you know, I'm, not, I'm quite open about speaking about it. Mm. I mean... No, I, I think I think we need to speak about it more because I mm. think so a lot of people uh, in general they don't have any understanding of, of what it is. Some people think like ah, just like it's it's, it's not even real. It's just like well, oh. the thing is bipolar. The word bipolar is banded about way too much. Mm -hmm. People say to me, oh, I think I'm bipolar. I'm like, no, mm. you're not bipolar. You would know about it if you have bipolar. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, so the downside of it, I, my episodes have played out publicly on social media and, mm. you know, there's stuff I regret, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's my illness and not me, you know, and some people might yeah. think I've been a bit of an arsehole or something, mm. but, you know, if people who know me mm. know that it's just, you know, it's, you know, it's my, my bipolar. No, you know? I mean, because, yeah, like, uh, I, I remember, like, there were a couple of times when I kind of, I, I read some of your statuses on Facebook and I thought, like, yeah, probably he, he's having a, a, there you like, go. a so you know, case, you know, but at the yeah. same time, I, like, I had no idea what to do. I thought, like, well, should I kind of reach out? Should I tell him? Should I ask him something? Should I, like, or should I just, like, kind of let it play it out? Yeah, and, best and, thing you could have done, let it play yeah. out. Let yeah. it play out because I'm just, I mean, there's no way anyone could talk me down from it mm -hmm. or try and make me get some sort of help or intervention. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in my own little bubble. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to enjoy that episode, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Until it sort of, you know, turns on me almost. Yeah, but, but like at the same time, like, well, 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 like when you have a friend and you know, like, okay, like there's an episode, like, but you at the same time, Especially when you don't know much about like the, the actual disorder, like yeah. you might think like, is there kind of like down like danger side? Is there like some kind of like yeah? Way? Because you can lose all you look basically. What happens is you lose all your inhibitions, so you can put yourself in dangerous situations. You mm. know what I mean? You know, yeah. But do like do you get some kind of like crazy like not crazy, but like do you get some kind of like big ideas like I will do this tomorrow and like this will bring me, I don't know, like I will, I will invent like, I don't know, time machine or whatever. Yeah, you, you could do that. Yeah, yeah, you can get highly creative, trust me. Mm. But, um, you know, I, I've got myself in all sorts of trouble, mate, with, with episodes. Um, yeah, like because you almost become, it's like you feel like, I don't know what God is or who God is, but you feel mm -hmm. almost godlike, you feel invincible, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get you can. You get, I put myself in some precarious situations. Mm. You know what I mean? And like, it's like, it's like you, when you come down off the episode, you're like, shit, man, that was dangerous. You know, mm. because I lost all my inhibitions. It's like it's like waking up from a bad hangover sometimes. You know, what mm. I mean? you know, when it wears off. Yeah, because it releases all all your serotonin at once. And yeah, all, all your feel good chemicals. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, so when all of those chemicals have been depleted, then you're gonna feel like shit afterwards. You know what I mean? You know, mm. This is years ago, and I've been openly public about my condition. Mm -hmm. But I did remember someone said to me, "Oh, don't don't mention you got bipolar. You won't get any acting work." Mm. And I thought, "No, fuck that. I'm telling everyone." And do do you think it actually kind of like uh, ever played against you, like in, no. in, in acting? No, mm. not at all. Not at all. Mm. And I think, especially nowadays, it's, the stigma is it's not as bad as it used to be mm. at all. You know, not not as bad as at all, especially with like you know, I'm, I've got you know, I'm neurodiverse, so 
you know, I think the industry's got so much better at recognising mm -hmm. everyone's, um, you know, neurodiversity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like, and again, like, if it's out of control, if it doesn't harm your process, if it doesn't harm the production, like, then <clears throat> what, like, what, it, it doesn't no. matter at all. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, if I'm taking my tablets and doing what I'm supposed to do to them, I, I'm responsible. Now, what it was, I've not been responsible in the past, and now, I got to a stage where I'm like, I can't do that anymore. I need to be responsible and take mm -hmm. responsibility for my condition. Mm -hmm. And all it is to take a few tablets. What's that? I mean, my mum said to me, you know, look, I take tablets for my blood pressure. You know, it's no big deal. Just take your tablets, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, and manage it, you know, with, um, you know, things like drinking alcohol. I don't, I don't do that anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually in recovery for addiction as well. Mm. you know, which uh, which affected me. So, yeah, so it's all good. So I've got two recoveries, so I've got a dual diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever done, mate, you know. And now I'm sort of conscious if any signs come along, or, you know, say if I was having an episode, mm -hmm. I'm more conscious now, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I can catch it, nip it in the bud before, mm -hmm. you know, before I'm selfish and I enjoy that high. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's great, man. That's great, I'm really happy for you. And, yeah, um, thank you. It, it's it's very good. 